welcome to Standing Up. Wow, what an episode we have this week. This week I spoke to Rami Aman, a very brave individual from Gaza. And when I say brave, I mean fucking brave. I had a lot of concern with whether to use Rami's real name and whether to show his face in this interview. There's a lot to fear for a Gazan speaking with an Israeli. There's a very strong normalization movement. Did I say normalization? Anti-normalization movement amongst Palestinian culture. What, what this means essentially is anti-normalization is not normalizing ties with who you deem the enemy. And while I could see a case being made for why this is important, Rami and I both agree that the anti-normalization movement is a roadblock to peace between our, our two nations. So we discussed that in the episode. I asked him if he wants me to blur out his face, thinking that he, that would be what he wants. And he was pretty adamant about me using his real name and showing his face. So I did that. Um, both Hamas and the PA have a history of arresting and interrogating Palestinians who have been in contact with Israelis. The claim they make is that they view them as potential collaborators, that they're working with the Israeli intelligence agencies to under, undermine, um, undermine their government. Uh, but really what we've seen is many activists have been arrested and interrogated. Um, even with Rami's adamant request to put his real name and face, it still wasn't an easy decision for me to make, but I ended up doing it. Rami is a truly special individual. He's more optimistic and more hopeful about solving this conflict than actually any other Palestinian I've ever met, and even more so than just about every Israeli I've met. He truly believes in coexistence, in reaching out to the other side and getting to know the other side. He, un he understands that that is how you create a foundation for peace. We had a great conversation. Um, the quality could have been better. His internet connection wasn't great. That is just the reality of living in Gaza today. But I think that this conversation will inspire hope in many people. Um, it should show many Israelis that there are people in Gaza and he explains there's many more like him that are dying to just meet people on the other side and I think that's going to be important for Israelis to see um, and I hope people in Gaza will see this episode as well and see that there's many Israelis like me who are willing and want to engage with Palestinians to build ties so we could live here together in peace and that's it uh, enjoy the episode guys it's a great one Rami, my brother, how are you? How are you? Great. B before we get started, I just want to make sure that this interview isn't putting you in danger in any way. So I'm very happy to make this entire thing anonymous and blur out your face. Don't worry, brother. Don't worry. Okay. Understandable. But just so you know, if you decide later on that you want me to blur out your face and use a different name, I'd be very happy to. Just let me know. I understand you very well, you know, but for someone like me, I bust a lot of challenges, you know. I, I'm not doing bad things. Uh, I understand what you uh, want to tell me, to tell me, but uh, nothing bad will happen, you know. Already we are living in a very bad situation. I had a lot of experiences with the securities here. Sometimes they arrested me, sometimes they invited me. My last time was in the jail. It was in the period between June and July about my relations with the Israelis. Now I'm free, so it's okay. We are not talking about, we are not talking about tunnels. We are not talking about uh, fighters. I'm not sending you names or maps. <laughs> So, so for me, nor, nor would I ask you for any of that stuff. Well, I just want to let you know that if if you decide that you want me to um, blur your face, then I'd be happy to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Yeah. Already, you know, um, 
Sometimes I be in the Israeli media, I do four, channel one, channel 10. Uh, every day I have Skype meetings between Israelis and Palestinians in Gaza. And uh, some people here in Gaza called me the leader of uh, normalization or leader of Libya, but the most of people here in Gaza supporting my work, supporting my, my peace ideas. So and already I have a group. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not alone in this year. So feel free to ask me anything, but I don't like, you know, to receive questions about Hamas, about Islamic Jihad, about all these. Yeah. Groups. Okay. Because um, it's not mine, you know. You can ask me any question you like, and I have all answers. But if you will ask me about if Hamas bad or good, I will answer you as Hamas. <laughs> it's not a question. Yeah, I understand completely. So in that sense, we're limited. So my question is, if we blur your face, can you then talk about Hamas? <laughs> Maybe in another in another video meeting. In this meeting, feel free to ask me anything. And for sure, we know each other. In this house, I was in this house since uh, three years. Yes, yeah, so I'm happy you bring that up because I think it would be good to give the viewers um, a little reference about our relationship. You were at my house, at my apartment in Tel Aviv. I believe it was two years ago. Um, we hung out, we had a great conversation. Yeah, exactly, exactly in May 2017. You have a better memory than me, Rami. Yeah, for sure. This kind of atmosphere, I like it. So for sure, I will save it in my memory. It was last, last May, the period between uh, 26th or 27th or 29th, uh, the period between the 25th of May or 29th or 28th. But in the last of May, I was with you and already I'm in touch with many friends. I uh, you know there like Celia and Adina. And oh, wow. Benon. Until now, so I created friends in your apartment. So... <laughs> It's, it's fine. Exactly, I'll turn it now. Well, I'm very happy to hear yeah. that, Rami. And I think uh, that brings us to an important point. Um, I know very few Gazans, and most Israelis know no Gazans, and most Gazans know no Israelis. Um, and it kind of leaves the depiction of one another in the hands of our media our polit and our politicians and our school systems. So there's really a select few people who get to paint the narrative of the other side. And I think as you and I both have witnessed that once we get to meet people on the other side, we see a whole different side to them. We truly get to know them as humans, exactly. as individuals who really want the same things as us, peace, sure. prosperity, and freedom. So I think that really you know, shows the power of people meeting cross borders and, and building friendships. Yes. And also I need to mention to you, I'm not alone in this, in this room. I have my friends here. Here is Ahmad. Hi. And uh, I will just... And here is Abdurrahman. Hello. Salam alaikum. Great to meet you all. Salam. Where is Manar? Uh, you can see me. Hi. Salam alaikum. Yeah, Hi. And, uh, he is Adar. I told them about you. So I'm not talking with the Israelis uh, away from the people. Yeah. So y yeah. you mentioned. Yeah, I mentioned to the people here every day that the Israeli there trying to, to help Gazans, they're trying to support Gazans, they're trying to change the whole situation and not just from the left parties. I'm already in touch with, with a lot of friends you know, from the right parties. The people here in Gaza are the people on your side. Uh, don't know anything about the situation. Don't know anything about the relations. They need to know more about the others. The media reflect another picture of the Israelis and the Palestinians. The media showing for the Palestinians here in Gaza that the Israelis are snipers soldiers and it's 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 fake it's not it's not the full picture you and me promote for the other people 
other parts from the picture, from the whole pictures between Palestinians and Israel. Right. You're right. Um, it. So it, it's true that there are more and more Israelis that are uh, working to reach out to Gazans. Um, and you, you know this from your own experience. And as you said, it's not only from the left wing parties, there's also right wing Israelis that are reaching out to Gazans and trying to build connections with people on the other side. And I, I think that is essential. You mentioned that some people consider you a normalizer. And I think you know, the, the anti-normalization movement um, seems, seems harmful because so much can be accomplished if we are able to build a trust between both populations. And anti-normalization says we don't normalize with the enemy. Um, so what, how does that impact you, this anti-normalization movement? Do you feel pressure um, about what you're doing? Do you get uh, hate from anybody from the work that you're doing? For sure, but let me answer you from the beginning. You know, I started to, to go through this uh, field, especially the Israeli and the Palestinian field. I was in 2009. After the first Israeli operation over Gaza Strip, I was a producer of uh, Russia Today satellite channel here in Gaza. So during uh, the operation in the 18 days, I was in the street, uh, very close from the dead bodies, very close from the families, very close from the whole conflict, you know, was for me a terrible period. After this operation, I decided to, to, to do something. Can it change the situation? For sure, you remember in Gaza here, we missed 1,400 Gazans. Most of them were civilians. Most mm -hmm. of them were kids. And not included in this conflict. And already I missed many friends in this operation. And, and I know them very well. They are not uh, fighters, they are not anything, they are not terrorists. After this experience, I decided to, to, to reach the Israeli community, to build the bridges with the Israeli community. I decided myself I was so afraid. It was very hard uh, for me. Wait, Rami, Rami. You know, I, I, years ago, I am talking about Israeli Palestinians. Rami, I don't mean to interrupt you, but you're breaking up and what you're saying is very important. So let, let's wait a minute for the connection to come back and then say it again. Uh, I just wouldn't want to oh, okay. miss this part, okay? Okay. Okay, let, let, let's try again. Go back like, uh, you know, a minute. About a, after, the, after the Gaza war. After the Gaza War in 2008 and 2009, I decided to, to make something for these people here in Gaza. We missed 1,400 Gazans. Most of them were civilians, were kids. And I know some people in this operation killed, and I, they are not included in this, in this conflict. Inside myself, I, I, I was a good witness about what happening in the ground. In the end, the civilians paying the price. So I, I thought how I can reach the Israeli community. For sure, you know that Gaza Strip are blockade. I can't travel any time to Israel or any any time to Egypt. So inside myself, uh, I, I I wrote a plan uh, about how I can find an Israelis or how I can promote peace from Gaza here to tell the people in the world that Gaza Strip contains uh, people here. They are peaceful people. They are normal people. They are they are not terrorists anymore. Uh, I started inside myself, I was so afraid because I know that uh, the Israeli-Palestinian discussions, especially from Gaza, it's like uh, a taboo case. Nobody talk about this topic. But before 20 or 30 years ago, hundreds of thousands of people here from Gaza worked in Israel daily. <laughs> so, so why you are now living in an in, 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 in opposite period? Inside myself, I was thinking that, yes, this road will, 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 will bring to me dangerous. This road will bring to me hateness. This uh, road will, will give to me also some uh, of treats. But in the same side, I was so close from the people. Most of the people here in Gaza calling for peace. So the majority here of people in Gaza thinking of peace. And I know that, as I told you, hundreds of thousands from Palestinians already worked in Israel. And all the time they are talking about their periods in Israel. So the majority of people 
need peace. So I started to visit NGOs. I started to NGOs promoting peace here in Gaza, like Peace of Peace, like the United Nations, like uh, American uh, MDs. All of them, you know, rejected me. All of them told me that we can't make any kind of initiative between Palestinians and Israelis from Gaza here. It's dangerous. And I told them that you got your salaries for your work. You got your salaries to promote peace in, in, in the conflict zone. There is no need to promote peace in Switzerland. Or there is no need to promote peace in, in Portugal, you know. <laughs> you need to promote peace in the conflict zone. They ignored me, and I started also to, to email Many NGOs in Israel uh, added uh, a lot of uh, Facebook rec Facebook profiles uh, from Israel. All of them ignored me until I found the uh, yellow leaders. I applied my application, and for me, uh, I wasn't sure 100 percent that they will accept me. Inside myself, okay, all of them neglect Gaza. All of them, like the Israelis, when I just sent a message to an Israeli. Uh, his or her answer was, you are a terrorist, you will hack my profile, uh, go to hell, you are an Arab. Hey, give me a chance to talk. I'm not enemy. I'm not, I'm not someone bad. Through Yellow Young Leaders, it was my first time to visit Jerusalem because they invited me to, to, to join a workshop talking about negotiation in Jerusalem. And it was my first time to visit Jerusalem. In Jerusalem. And uh, my permit was just uh, for 10 hours so for me it was a very small period but for my goal it was a very big chance I just need one minute to speak with the Israeli and then I can continue in this uh, workshop I met Ruth Christina Vasileva for sure you know her and uh, Ruth Christina Vasileva she was my first Israeli my first Israeli friend on the real and I met her and uh, I told her that I have an idea. I have an idea uh, how we can build a network, include dozens of Palestinians with the Israelis from different categories. We will not ignore anyone. We will invite all, left, right, Salafis, religious, everyone, everyone, Christians. All of them are responsible for this plan. She accepted my invitation and uh, we started to introduce our families together. I introduced Christina, Ruth Christina for my, for my family, and she introduced me for her family. In that time, since six years ago, when I, for example, organized a big meeting with Ruth or any Israeli, I was blown in my room. Nobody knows that I'm talking with the Israeli. Nobody knows. <laughs> because my ideas was, I need to, to build roots in the ground, and step by step, step by step, I will raise my voice. Now it's not a good time to speak about any kind of Israeli-Palestinian discussion. In the future, for sure, it will be a good chance to, to raise our voice. So me and Ruth started to organize some uh, video meetings, include dozens of Israel Israelis, under an initiative named Skype with your enemy. And we started from our close friends. You know, the friends who are away from the politics. We have a lot of people not, not, not included in this conflict. They are not talking about this conflict. We invite them. Yes, let's talk. I just need to mention for the Israelis and for the Palestinians that we are a human together, that you have the same nose, I have the same ears, I have the same eyes. We are a humans in the end. There is no need to blame each other. It's not, it's, it's, it's not our mission. Inside myself, uh, this kind of work gave to me two personalities. The first personality that now my idea promoting outside Gaza, now I reach it, the Israeli community. The other personality that I'm so afraid, some people will know about my work, the people will know about my relation with the Israelis, for sure maybe they can kill me anytime. Because it's, uh, it's uneasy to say that Rami talking with someone from Mukhabarat or someone from Mossad or Rami is a spy. Because there is no enough awareness about the, the, the relations between the Israelis and Palestinians. So a lot of uh, optimism because as I told you, when I review my ideas, I was alone in the beginning. But now I have some close friends. And then I... Ruth started to promote Rami Amani in Israel. 
Ruth introduced me to Enon, to Adar, to the Israeli community, and then it's mine. I added, uh, so I started to, to accept Facebook requests came to me from the Israeli community. In the past, they ignored me. Now I accept the request. So this kind of actions gave to me a lot of support, a lot of power to continue. And inside myself, I told that, yes, I, I, I'm right. The Israelis need peace. The Israelis need Gazans. The Israelis looking for partners here in Gaza. And I'm thinking in the same way. So let's build bridges. Sometimes I'm thinking that I'm afraid it's the end. Especially in the years in 2017, 2018, when I traveled to America and then returned back to Gaza and stayed one week in Israel, I met a lot of friends. A lot of people here started to ask me about the Israeli comments in, in, in inside my Facebook profile because I have hundreds of Israelis. So some, de some of them make likes for my posts, for my pictures, uh, I, I have comments. So the Israeli names started to promote in my profile. Nobody tell me. But the people in the street asked me how I can, how you, how I can help, help him, you know, to speak with the Israeli. So my answer was, you, you like to speak with the Israeli, you need to speak with the Israeli, why? And he told me that I need to know more about the Israeli and thinking how I can make peace with the Israeli. So inside myself, this kind of reaction from the people gave me also a lot of power that the people here in Gaza are thinking like me. So I started also to open a bridges between Israelis and Palestinians. As I told you, Rami as a person, afraid all the time. But Rami as someone has an idea, no, I'm not afraid anymore. Because I'm talking about Gazan rights, I'm talking about my life, I'm not talking about politics. Right. My hard time, my hard time it was in the previous years when I organized a bike ride marathon, include 50 Gazans here in Gaza and 150 Israelis. Uh, they, they used their bicycles to sympathize with each other. After this activity, the securities here, the Hamas securities, arrested me for 18 days. They cut my hair, put me in one room, and most of the questions was about my relations with the Israelis. Uh, they got my phone. Uh, they asked me a lot of hard questions. They asked me about how I start, how I reach the Israeli community, how, how I give the access, how I, how I build this access, who behind me. Sometimes they think here that I'm, I'm someone working under Fatah control. You know that we have an internal division. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the people from Hamas think that you are from Fatah. And the people from Fatah think that I'm from Hamas. But the majority of people here in Gaza, they are full independence. They are not Fatah, they are not, they are not Hamas. So... Uh, do, you, do you have a fear that you're going to be interrogated again uh, because you're speaking to me? Yes, and... yes, anytime. Any yes, anytime. But, but, but for me, I don't care because if Rami now in the jail, a lot of people will continue my idea. I'm not alone now. I'm not alone. I told them that in the jail, that if you arrest me or you kill me, you can't, you will not kill my ideas because already I succeed to build a lot of networks between Gazans and Israelis. And I'm a founder of a group, include 150 Gazans, like Manar and Abdurrahman and Ahmed. And all of them, and most of them, participated in Israeli Palestinian discussions through video. So if anyone came to me and killed me from my background, my group here will continue my idea. And there is no fear now because my answers all the time like hundreds or thousands of Palestinian patients getting their treatments from the Israeli doctors. There are thousands of Palestinian businessmen exporting and importing with the Israelis. A lot of Palestinian NGOs, employees talking with the Israelis. A lot of Palestinian journalists in touch with Israeli's company, 
go to them and arrest them. Right. Like me. So you're saying in a sense there's strength in numbers because you're not alone, because there's already a, a larger group of people interacting with exactly. Israelis, then it will be much harder for them to target you. Yes. Uh, I'm like a party here in Gaza now, you know, like, like a party. And also I suggested to them that we need a Palestinian mediator sometimes. I'm not trusting in any kind of foreign mediator. Mm -hmm. Americans, Qatari, Egyptians, when we are talking about conflict, there is there are two parts for this conflict or two arms, Israeli and Palestinians. There is no need for, for uh, someone from America or someone from Arab. No, let's talk directly. Why Hamas ask the Egyptians or the Qataris to send any kind of letter to the Israelis? It's a negotiation. In the end, go directly and negotiate about the soldiers, about the prisoners. We are not doing the bad things now. When I suggest for Hamas that let's make a, a prisoner's deal, release the Israeli soldiers, and uh, let the Israelis release the Palestinian prisoners, it's a very good deal for both sides. There is no need for Miladinov. There is no need for United Nations. There is no need for anybody else. We don't need a mediator. So sometimes the leaders here listen to me. But, but they think that, as I told you, maybe some Israelis will use Rami as a spy or as a collaborator. But for me, no, I'm someone normal. I was in your house. Right, you do, you're just, I mean, your mission is very simple. You want peace between Israelis and Palestinians and you understand very well that the way to do that is through getting to know one another, which is as yes. true as it gets. I'm not calling for one. I'm not calling for one state or two states. Already we are living in these two models. The Arabic cities in Israel, it's one state. Gaza or West Bank with Israel, it's two states. And we have daily conflict, daily bloody conflict. The problem between the people. Let the people talk and then they can decide. So do, do you have a preference as to what the ideal solution would be? A, a, do you have a preference? And what does it seem like the sentiment of uh, the average Gazan is uh, regarding what they see as a viable solution? Are they looking for a one-state solution? Or are they OK with a two-state solution? Or is there something else that, they, um, that they're looking for? The people here in Gaza, I'm talking about now, the people or the citizens in the streets, they are looking for any kind of solution. Just a solution. Anything. Give to them the freedom to travel, freedom to work. Uh, you know, freedom to, 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 to live in, 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 in like a person, like, like a human. But my activities as youth committee, it's divided for two ways. The first step that, first of all, I need to promote our internal peace as a Palestinians. There is a gap between Gaza Strip and West Bank. There is a gap between Gaza Strip and Jerusalem. There is a gap between Gaza Strip and the Israelis. First of all, I made uh, or I, I organized a lot of capacity building workshops for the Palestinians together. How we can understand each other first. How I mm -hmm. can and uh, how I can respect the Christians here in Gaza and how, how how I can use or help the Christians to understand Muslims. After that. I may qualify the, the, the beneficiaries to speak with the Israelis. And then they, they, they started to tell me that. Some, some of them, they are looking to live in two states. Some of them, they are talking about one state because it's, 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 it's some complex here in Gaza because I'm, I'm talking with some refugees, some Gazans. Most of people in the end, they need a solution. In my opinion, the solution starts First of all, from the people. Let the people talk with each other. How I can help you when I am not understand you? Right. I need to respect you. I need to understand you. I need to, to understand your rights. And you need to understand my rights. Not because of your leader and not because of my leader. It's because of our ideas. And then... We can create leaders from us. You can imagine if we, for example, 
of our decision makers already they are friends or they are talked before they be a decision makers. You can imagine, for example, if we have a Palestinian and Israeli for five years or 10 years, they are uh, joining uh, the political uh, situation in, in, in the Palestinian side, the political situation in the Israeli side, and then the Israeli be a prime minister, and then we have a Palestinian prime minister, and already they are friends. I think it's easy for them to sit in one table and write something for this country. So, and the people here also don't have the enough awareness about uh, the Israeli. As I told you, the media all the time represent for the Palestinians here that all of them are like the truck, the tractor. Uh, that's what happened. Yeah, in the two days. The the ones that are using the bulldozers. The bulldozers, yeah. Most of the people here in Gaza think that think now that the Israelis are like the bulldozer driver. Right. No, okay. a lot of Israelis from the rift and the right wings rejected this operation. Right. And, and they would and have the media all the time. The media all the time. Repeat, repeat, repeat this right. video, repeat this video, this video. Some people here, they are just 10 years old or 15 years old. So now they have very false picture about the Israeli. The media also, we have a problem in the media. The Israeli and in the Palestinian, they are just focused on the bloody pictures. They are just focused on the fighter pictures. They are just focused to get answers from some specific leaders here and there because they are looking for uh, right for uh, <laughs> not for money. Okay, for money. <laughs> you um, you mentioned previously that a lot of Gazans have come to you and they're looking for ways in which they can communicate with Israelis. So yes. I, I've always believed this to be one of the most powerful tools that is not yet being utilized in order to build bridges between both sides. And this is a tool that can be used for any two groups of people who are in conflict. But the power of social media to connect both sides, um, I think is huge. I think, again, one of the biggest challenges we have is the lack of trust and the amount of fear we have of one another. And if we could begin to get to know one another in a safe online setting, then I think that would be extremely impactful and, and begin to set the playing field in which peace can be born, right? So we're, we're not even, we, we don't even have the base for peace to exist. The base is people having more trust of one another. So. Throughout my years uh, working with Palestinians, one of the things I've advocated for was making a friend on the other side through social media. And I have, I have connected quite a few people. I know that there's another organization called the Peace Factory. They have a few pages. One of them is Israel Loves Palestine, Palestine Loves Israel. They also do something similar. My question to you is, would you like to begin and it's interesting because I'm giving you like an interesting uh, business proposition here while we're live on the, on the podcast, but maybe you and I can start a program where we begin to connect more Palestinians uh, with Israelis. I will reach out to Israelis, promote on social media, see who wants to meet somebody on the other side, and you will, you will do the same but in Gaza and come with a list of Palestinians that would like to meet people on the other side, and then we will connect them and try to facilitate and build as many cross-border friendships as possible. What, what do you think and about let, that? And let help them, let help them to think by themselves. We give them the chance. Yeah. And then they can decide. Yeah. Yes, I'm, I'm totally with you. And we, we had also some small projects, you know, to create podcast between Israelis and Palestinians. I will give your profile to Manar. Manar also, uh, she made us uh, a podcast between some Israelis and some Palestinians from Gaza. Cool. And uh, yes, it will be a good idea. I'm your, I'm your partner here. And remember, my friend, that we decided since three years ago to work together. I know the Peace Factory. I know Palestinians love Israel. Israel love Palestinians. Israel love Iran. Iran love Palestine. Yet the social media is very important. But also the social media should help us to enter the, the streets. Because also, I'm thinking how I can achieve 
uh, people in the streets, who, the people are away from social media. A lot of people, for example, in coffee shops, a lot of people already, they are in the streets. So if we also success to, 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 to have access and to promote some small clips, two or three or four, four minutes, and they promote it in the streets, I'm talking about Israel, it will be a good thing. Can the people think? So I'm with you, totally with you. We can do a lot of things together. I can introduce you for many friends here in Gaza. And yes, let's do it. I'm with you, Adar, since years ago. <laughs> you were from the first people I met. Not all of the people who trust me in, in the beginning. Right. I saved, I saved the people who standed with me. I was in your apartment and you gave me a lot of trust. You were not, you wasn't around me all the time, stay here or stay there. So I, I felt your trust. But right. Also when I was in Enon's flat, so I think if Enon not trusting me, he will not put me in his flat for one minute. True. I stayed with Enon for one week. And until now, I'm talking about my last experience in Israel. Uh, the Israelis rejected me many times, you know, to have a permit and to visit Israel. <laughs> right. You... Yes, I, I succeed since months to travel to India, but also they rejected me to enter Israel. And also you need to know that a lot of BDS leaders helped by an Israelis. So it's not a beer, it's not normalization. <laughs> because of that, I'm not answering the, if any one from BDS or anti-normalization talk to me, talk bad to me, I'm not answering because I know a lot. Like a lot of Israelis helping Palestinians who are in anti-normalization. So it's not a normalization. It's good for you and it's bad for me. But one day I will talk about everything. Sometimes I feel that there are groups or NGOs using this, this conflict to make money and feed this conflict to feed their financial accounts in the bank. In this conflict, our message not depends on money. Everyone needs money. But for sure, I will not talk with the Israelis <laughs> to have money. It's, there is no money in that. I can use. It was easy for me to, to speak through Skype normalization and it's bad and liberation and in the end i receive 50 or 100 dollars for my interview i can make a lot of money if i'm using it the same way because of that i'm silenced i'm silenced also because i know that our voice raise and raise many people here in gaza many people there in israel now uh, know that in gaza there is a group or, or, or there is a chance to have partners so please, Adar, go on your idea. I'm your partner here, and I'm not talking behalf of myself. I'm not. I'm talking behalf of hundreds of thousands. I'd say uh, we just uh, we're we're at an we're at an agreement. Let's go for it, man. Uh, we'll we'll start this project. Um, as far as I'm concerned, as soon as we sign off, I'll make my first post, and we'll you know start talking about it. We'll start uh, connecting people. Like I may do. Uh, and it's I told you, idea. I showed you already, I'm not alone in this room. Mm -hmm. Right. I'm not alone. Three people around me listening to my conversation. Yeah. Do, do you have and any... The people here and the people there need to see our relations. A hundred percent. That's one of the reasons I'm doing this podcast, uh, because I want to show people how an Israeli and a Palestinian can speak can speak as humans, can hear one another, can, can yeah. sh show that they're truly listening and concerned for their well-being. I think, you know, the, the, idea, the idea here is to create a model of what communication needs to look like between supposedly opposing sides. You and I are not in opposition to one another, but we seemingly are from two sides, you know, of the spectrum. But really, we're brothers. So this, this is really what I want to show people. Do you have... Um, do you have any plans to come back to Israel uh, sometime soon? All the time I'm for a 
help him from Gaza. Recently, after a month and a half from now, so maybe I will apply tomorrow or maybe in the first of the coming week. But I don't know. It's just trying. I missed right. a lot of uh, chances, you know. And I have already a lot of invitations coming to me, universities, workshops, NGOs. But uh, this is the blockade. This is the siege. The Israeli siege over the people, not over the leaders. The leaders can travel anytime. Al Ahmadi, Al Qatari, come anytime to Gaza. <laughs> After or before 12 p.m., I'm not al Ahmadi. <laughs> right. So sometimes the Israeli administrations using the blockade to, 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 to make the balance in, 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 in the whole situation. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, but for sure, I will keep trying to visit you again and to visit the, all of my Israeli friends there. But at least I'm still in touch with them all through Facebook, through emails. Uh, yes, we, 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 we broke the siege, we broke the blockade. We, we just need to mention for the people that Israelis and Palestinians talking with each other, we need to make them more brave. Uh, you can imagine if the majority of the people talking about their relations, I think everything will be good. I was in Jerusalem, so so I, I saw hundreds of people, Palestinians and Israelis, they are dancing with each other, neighbors together. They are businessmen. Why they are not talking about their relations? They are afraid. Afraid of what? And also some people, they have two faces, one face on social media and other face on the land. <laughs> True. Uh, but through your programs, through your plans, I think we can create a new thing. The people here in Gaza need, need any kind of a chance to talk about their lives. Here in Gaza, we deserve our rights. We are away from this conflict. My, my right to travel. I have rights also to, to, to swim. To I have also a right to go everywhere. I'm not a terrorist. I'm not someone dreaming all the night how I can kill an Israeli in the morning <laughs> right you don't you don't yet have though enough freedom of movement I would say because as you mentioned you and many other Gazans simply cannot travel freely to other countries so you're free to move within Gaza and, and I think this is very important many Israelis they they have a perspective of the conflict that there's not much Israel can do to bring about peace, that it's really all in the Palestinians' hands to accept us here on this land. And once that happens, um, we'll have peace. Sometimes, sometimes they are right. Sometimes they are right. I'm with them, but not all the time. Right. And, and I agree because there's a lot we can do. And one of the things is trying to build more cross-border communications. And, and uh, Speak with me. At least speak with me. Listen to me. At least. From your house, right. from your phone. And, and just letting more Gazans out to travel, right? The, the, the more Israel, Israel allows Gazans to leave Gaza, even if it's just a one-day permit within Israel, if it's to visit any holy site in Jerusalem or the West Bank, or to travel to, to pray in Jerusalem, to pray. They can pray in Al-Aqsa. They need to visit their families or relatives in the West Bank or Jerusalem. It's easy. It's not hard. Right. Inshallah. Inshallah, Adar. Yeah. Inshallah, everything will be okay. I just need, we just need to create a new generation. Can it create a new leaders? It's easy. Uh, yeah. and, 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 and I can neglect you and you can't neglect me. And in the end, if any Israeli asked me to go to Egypt, no. You can't ignore Gaza. There is no solution without Gaza. And here in my side also, there is no solution without the Israelis. I agree. I, I agree completely. I think um, we, we, need to, we need to accept that, you know, our past, presence, and futures are intertwined and that, you know, we need to start to work together. And, um, you know, as mentioned, the, the more Gazans can travel freely, the more their mind opens to 
the other side and the more the Israeli minds opens once they meet Gazan. So, you know, uh, again, it just strengthens the point that we need to begin to communicate. Um, Anti-normalization seems to be a huge roadblock to this. And, you know, it, it, I, it's very reassuring to me to hear you speak, to see your optimism. You know, you said you think it's easy to switch leadership. I'm not as convinced that it's easy, but I am optimistic that it can and will happen. Um, but you truly give me hope, Rami, because, um, you know, you, you show a side of Gaza, a side of Palestine that many Israelis are not aware of, many Israelis will never see or hear of, and it really breaks a certain stigma, a certain stereotype that many Israelis have of the people of Gaza. So I think you're doing tremendous work showing this other side, and I think it's commendable. Um, and I'm very much looking forward to uh, starting this project with you where we can connect people on both sides. I think it can be tremendous. Me too, my yeah. friend. Me too. Is, Me too. is there any, anything you want to say to the people of Israel or to the world before we wrap this up? Uh, yes, uh, I need to tell them all that. Also, I received my hope from you, from Enon, from Ruth, from Ruth, from Adel. Uh, they were from, with me in the beginning. So they gave me the hope that I'm not alone here in Gaza. Because of that, I, I feel sometimes optimism. I have a lot of great friends there. Roni, Ruth, Yael, I don't need, I, I don't want to, to, to forget, you know, my friends. Uh, let's talk about sports. Let's talk about culture. Let's talk about religious. Let's talk about drinks. Let's talk about sex. Let's talk about kisses. Let's just stop blaming each other and, and neglect other voices and just focus on our role. Because I believe that the majority of people will stand with us because we are not an NGO as a project. We are people working from their minds, not because I'm 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 employee in, in this NGO or employee in this project, or I'm not using the democracy or peace building as, 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 as words to get funds. No, peace, it's a value. It's, and also I need to tell the Israelis, peace word, it's not like I will erase you from your house. Or also peace word for the Palestinians, maybe it's, it's like that they are losers. Let's create our values together. You can't ignore me. And for sure I can't ignore you. And don't trust the media. Go directly to know the others by your phone, not by the news. That's it. And thank you so much, Adel, for giving me this chance to talk with you and all the people. Uh, and I need to tell them also that I was in your apartment, that we drank together, that we drank together. And uh, for sure, one day I will visit you. Um, uh, yeah, as soon as you're, you, know, you come back, let me know. I'd love to meet you again in person. And uh, we're going to start that project, as we mentioned. Uh, it was a true honor, Rami. Thank you so much. Write your plan. Include me. I'm with you. Amazing, brother. Have a beautiful day. Thank you. Thank you. You too. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Bye.